I am an assistant professor at Baruch College, and uh, right now uh, Tim and I are, are working on a project uh, looking at um, the role of oysters in uh, Jamaica Bay and the, the potential for um, oysters to uh, mitigate nitrogen pollution in the bay. One of the major problems in Jamaica Bay in regards to water quality is the amount of nitrogen that comes in from four or five large wastewater treatment plants that are situated around the bay. Uh, the wastewater effluent is high in organic matter, it's high in nitrogen and phosphorus, everything that's collected not only from the, the toilets and the sinks and the showers, but also the streets of New York City gets dumped into the bay. And one of the major concerns with nitrogen pollution is when, it, when it's pumped in, these nutrients actually almost fertilize the algae and the phytoplankton that grow. And this can cause problems related to um, uh, really green water, uh, when you have an excess amount of growth, it can all begin to um, die and rot at the same time. It can cause low oxygen conditions in the, in the water after some time. And so dealing with this uh, mass of phytoplankton that's stimulated by the wastewater effluent and, and other types of street runoff is one of the big concerns in the bay, uh, not only for water quality, but also for protecting the, the marshland and the grasses that live around here. The disappearance of the grasses in Jamaica Bay is really one of the major environmental concerns. The hypothesis is it's related to the nitrogen pollution, changes in hydrology, which are affecting the way that the grasses can remain uh, sort of rooted uh, in the relatively loose sand, and also the different types of um, ways that the phytoplankton and the grasses are interacted, interact in terms of their uh, ability to use the nutrients that are in the water. One of the things that bivalves like, like mussels and clams and, and oysters can do is by filtering out the, the plankton from the water and then depositing the, the nitrogen that's locked up in the plankton, plankton directly to the sediments. Uh, that's where the microbes can process it and actually turn it into uh, you know, inert or unactive forms of nitrogen. We obtained the funding last summer. Chester and I wrote the NSF grant together. It's from the National Science Foundation uh, Division of Environmental Biology. Uh, it's about $275,000. And we saw it as an opportunity to combine our, our sort of complementary training and expertise. So we collected these sediments from different uh, trays that contain oysters at different densities or no, no oysters at all. And so what we're doing is measuring the nitrogen transformation uh, in these bottles, and then we measure the nitrogen gas formation in these, um, these bottles, which are gas tight and allow us to sample the, um, the headspace in here with a syringe. And so by doing this um, in sediments that we collect from sort of experimental setups that have different oyster uh, densities overlying the sediments, we hope to show whether or not the oysters are affecting the way that nitrogen gas comes off of the sediments. We're at the really early stages of our, of our data collection. I think what we're observing is we have differences in the amount of organic matter that accumulates on the sediments among our four sites in Jamaica Bay. So there seems to be a strong effect of location uh, on how much of this organic debris is getting to the sediments. But whether or not uh, that's from the oysters or from just what's settling out of the water column, we don't know yet. A lot of times the restoration of oysters is, is promoted as a way to increase water quality and it very may well do that. But uh, there aren't a lot of good examples of, of very concrete measurements of the influence of oysters on nitrogen cycling in, uh, you know, in the real world that aren't in aquariums or that aren't in sort of modeling exercises. And so we just don't know, but it's worth exploring. So we feel whatever our results show, they're going to be informative in that way. Uh, we're just uh, attempting an objective, an objective approach towards just understanding how it is that oysters are affecting these processes that occur in the sediments.